Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. I'm very excited today because there is a brand new two-part casting compound on the market, newly released by Elichem, and it's called Hydrofleur. And I have been very lucky because Elichem have sent me some to try out. So in today's video, to put Hydrofleur to the test, I'm going to be making some egg cups. So grab yourself a drink, get comfy and join me in finding out how well Hydrofleur manages with the egg cup test. Before you start preparing your Hydrofleur, make sure you've got everything ready and to hand. I'm just getting my mould ready now, making sure it's clean, dry and free of dust. This mould is one I made myself and I will leave a link in the video description and at the end of this video for you to go and watch how I made this mould. It's really, really easy. So yeah, I'm getting the mould ready. I, it's got a cover and the cover is to stop the, um, the liquid from leaking through that split which is down the side of the mould because obviously the egg cup won't come out of the mould without that split down the side so that's why I designed it that way with the cover on to keep it all together and it works really really well. I'm just putting some body powder on the inside of that cover and that just stops it from clinging to the silicon mould and so it's easy to take off afterwards. Okay, the mould's ready. Let's start mixing the Hydrofleur casting compound. Hydrofleur comes in two components. You've got a mineral powder and a water-based acrylic binder. So first I'm going to measure out my acrylic binder. I'm going to pour out 26 grams. I'd previously worked out how much I needed for this egg cup so I was prepared for the video. <laughs> so it's 26 grams of the liquid and then it needs to be multiplied by two and a half so, and that's how much you will use of the powder. So it was 26 grams of liquid and 65 grams of powder. If you don't want to weigh it, you can also measure this out by volume and the ratio will be just the same. So once you've measured out your liquid, you need to add your colour. And I'm using Resi Tint Acrylic Ink, which it works really well with this, but you can use any water-based um, colour pigment and it will be fine. You can use acrylic paints or... Um, so acrylic inks, tempera, is it tempera powder I think it's called? I've never never used it but apparently you can use that. So it, as long as it's water based it should be fine. So I'm just adding a few drops of the Brilliant Yellow and mixing it into the liquid before I add the powder. It's not a problem once you've added the powder if you think that the colour's not quite there you can add more colour but it's best to do the colour before you add the powder as much as you possibly can. So now the colour's in and it's time to weigh out the mineral powder and as I said before I just need 65 grams and I'm just going to scoop it a little bit at a time into the liquid so that I can make sure I'm getting the, I'm not going over the amount that I want. And if you were mixing a really large quantity of this, I would recommend adding a little bit, stirring it, then adding a bit more, stirring it, do it that way. So measure them out separately and, you know, then mix it all in a bit at a time. But because I'm just using a small amount, I'm just putting it all in there and mixing it all in one go and it works fine doing it that way. I would also like to add that you don't have to stick to this mixing ratio. If you want your mixture to be thicker, add less liquid or more powder, <laughs> whichever way around you want to do it. Or if you want it to be thinner, just add less powder. So, you know, it depends on what 
kind of strength you want or how detailed your mould is and that will help you decide how thick you want your mixture to be. Once it's measured out, give it a good mix. I was really pleasantly surprised at how easily the powder dissolves into the liquid. It just mixes really easily. You don't need any special tools. I'm just using a silicon spatula to mix it and it became very smooth very quickly. So that was a very good bonus for this one. Compared to other ones that I've used that are similar, I found it mixed better. Once mixed, you can start pouring it into your mould. I just started with a small amount so that I could squeeze out the air bubbles before adding any more of it. Now, when you're pouring the hydroflow, it can sometimes act a little bit strangely. It looks like it's starting to set up as you're pouring it. It's actually not. It's just... I don't know, I can't really explain it because once you mix it again, it becomes really lovely and thin and creamy again. Um, it's just one of those things. Sometimes as you start to pour, it looks like it's starting to thicken just before your eyes while you're pouring. But it's, it's just one of those strange quirks and it's fine once you mix it again. So that's what I did because that happened to me. So for a project like this, it is best to do it a little bit at a time, give it a little bit of a bang on the table to release any bubbles and let the bubbles come to the top or pat the sides or give it a gentle squeeze. Don't squeeze too much if you're using a mould like mine with a split down the side because otherwise you'll open up that split on your mould and you don't want that to happen. I wanted the colours in my egg cup to be gradiated so before adding any more I added a little bit of the resin tint red I think it's called fire red or flame red one of the two so I added a few drops just to make it into a kind of orangey coral colour I added a little bit of that into the mould and gave it another squeeze and then added more of the red to make it even darker for the last pour. I really had to scrape the cup to get it all out and um, make sure it was completely filled. I had the measurements exactly right, um, but with hindsight, it would have probably been better to have made a tiny bit too much and it wouldn't have been so difficult to get it full. But yeah, I did. I made <laughs> exactly the right amount which made life a little bit difficult for me finishing it off. Anyway, here you can see it's all filled up, I'm giving it a last little pat and leave it from one to two hours before demoulding. So that cover came off nice and easily with the baby powder inside and now let's have a look. The split mould works really well for this kind of thing. It makes demoulding so easy and it just you give it a little bit of a wiggle and out it will pop. And there we have it. I really like the way the colours turned out on that one. Right then, so because of that split in the mould, do you see the line there? That will happen whenever you use a mould like that. But it's fine because you can sand it down really, really easily. Um, Ellie Kem do recommend that you wait two hours before sanding it. However, I did it straight away and I found that it sanded quite well doing it that way because it's still not as hard as it would be if you waited two hours. But yeah, their recommendations are two hours, so I would probably say wait two hours. I'm just being honest, I didn't. <laughs> And yeah, you can wet dry it, <laughs> wet sand it or dry sand it. I dry sanded it this time, but I did have a go on another one, wet sanding it. And I think I preferred doing it with wet sanding. I think it did work. Uh, you did get a much smoother effect. So I'm just leveling out the bottom nice and um, it's nice and easy to just rub it against a big sheet of sandpaper like that. 
and then for the sides I've got some of those sanding blocks and I will link to those in my um, Amazon storefronts because they're really handy to have and you can use them wet or dry. I made another one in exactly the same way but instead of red I used blue and came up with this lovely green and yellow one which I just wanted to quickly show you because everybody enjoys watching a little bit of demoulding. This one actually came out even better. Um, I, I think with the first one I squeezed it a little bit too much while, you know, while the um, hydroflow was wet and I disturbed the split in the side of the mould. But this one didn't come out too badly at all. You know, where the line from the mould was, I didn't get much of that showing up, so that one worked out well. And this is the one which I had to go at wet sanding. Well, apart from the bottom, I used the normal coarse dry sandpaper for the bottom but for the sides I put my sanding block in water and wet sanded it and yeah like I said before I think it does work better if you use wet sandpaper just a medium grit and then just rinsed it off gave it a wipe and it turned out really nicely I made several of these egg cups trying out different colours and obviously I didn't film them all, me making all of them and I found that it definitely makes a big difference the more time you spend on banging the mould or squeezing the mould or tapping the mould or banging the table all those different methods of vibrating the mould to make sure those bubbles are gone and I did get varying effects and results in all the six egg cups that I made some were much better than others and you could really tell that I'd spent more time on them so now before I seal them I decided I wanted to trim the edges with gold and I'm just using a Krylon gold leaf pen I wasn't sure once I'd done it I couldn't quite decide whether I, I liked it with or without the best but I ended up doing them all and yeah, it finished them off nicely. I do quite like that gold on there. And it goes on really easy with that pen. It's really nice and easy to control. Right then, so the egg cups are obviously going to be, need to be hand washed. And so because of that, I need to seal them because it is slightly porous. Um, not as porous as if you'd made these out of something like Plaster of Paris. That really is porous. Um, this is much stronger and less porous than Plaster of Paris, but it still does need sealing. And I'm using, I think it's called Vallejo. Vallejo um, acrylic varnish and it's the matte one. I didn't really want it shiny so I used my matte varnish and any water-based varnish, you know, acrylic varnish will do. Although I do believe Elikem are going to be releasing their own varnish to go with the Hydroflow very soon so keep your eye open for that. But other than that, yeah, any acrylic varnish will do fine and I would say give it two or three layers to be on the safe side. I'm just using a brush and making sure I don't leave any marks. And here's a quick look at the other four which I made. The two black ones were ones which I wasn't happy with with the colour so I just painted them with acrylic paint and I used some gold spray paint just for the middle and I quite liked how on the inside the gold paint drips down and I know some people wouldn't like that happening but I liked the look it gave so I left it like that and didn't do any more layers so I quite like those and those are my husband's favourites so those are his egg cups now and here are the egg cups in action and in conclusion I really loved the Hydroflow. It was strong. It had a really smooth finish and not too many bubbles. It takes colour well. It sands well. It seals well. And I would highly recommend it. And if you would like to see the video in which I made this cool wooden platter, please just click the link which will be coming up on the left. 
And if you would like to see how I made the mould for my egg cup, the picture on the right will take you there. All my links to the products I've used and to Elikem's website will be in the video description. If you haven't already subscribed, please do and ring the notification bell and I will see you next time. Bye for now.